Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Rapp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening this weekend in the news. Well, actually, not so great things happening in the news. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I got some videos. I got some announcements. Um, but first, let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 55 degrees outside, and you have that 60%, 60% chance of showers likely happening today with a high of 65. So a lot of cooler temperatures happening today. But of course, tonight, you're going to have a 40% chances of thunderstorms. And of course, uh, I've recently checked the... Uh, the uh, the uh, fire danger in the Missoula area, and it's at green, so we're still good, um, but doesn't mean that uh, just because we're in the green doesn't mean we can't have a fire that starts. That's just not how it works. So um, Saturday, high of 72. Um, Sunday, Saturday night, you're going to have some rain, maybe going into the Sunday, but it looks like Sunday, Monday is going to be mostly uh, sunny and clear. Um, I'm going to have your uh, July 4th forecast next week as well to talk about what's happening there, but I just want to remind people that um, Fireworks are illegal in the city of Missoula, and I do have a city council meeting where they talk a little bit more about enforcement and about what they're going to be doing and about some of the patrols that are going to be happening between uh, Tuesday and Thursday surrounding July 4th as well. So let's kick things off. Um, an arrest warrant for 17-year-old Dylan Curtis uh, Conat of Missoula has been issued in the investigation of a shooting near Sentinel High School on Sunday, the M Missoula Police Department announced yesterday. So, um... On Wednesday, I uh, gave a, uh, any uh, information about this, but uh, now we have the name of the of the alleged shooter who is still at large and is considered armed and dangerous. Um, the gun that was used on the 16, 17 year old who were injured um, was stolen from a car in Lolo. Uh, of course, uh, he also had priors as well. He was expected to, to go, go to a juvenile case court pending at the end of July, but went missing in May of this year. So Conat may be um, armed and dangerous, and anybody who sees him or has any information about his whereabouts, call 911 or the police department's main phone line at 552-6300 for Detective Captain Mike Kohler um, for more information um, to give him, and if you see Dylan Curtis Conant. So that's your local news, what's happening in the city of Missoula. Um, in the state news, Montana, um, one of the things that people love to talk about, especially in eastern Montana, is if a tornado touches down. And I've never seen a tornado in eastern Montana. All I hear is I have family in eastern Montana, and all they ever talk about is if a tornado touches down. And yet, four tornadoes um, have touched down, according to weather officials in eastern Montana, the other day and moved on to North Dakota. No damage has been reported thus far. Moving on to other state news, in Helena, another protest for immigration justice will be held in our capital uh, tomorrow at the Women's Park from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and will feature speakers including Helena's Mayor Wilmont Collins, as well as community faith leaders and movement organizations. The sponsor is sponsored by Human Rights Network, Montana Immigration Immigrant Justice Alliance, Helena YWCA, Montana Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, and Helena Rising. Many critics of the Trump administration claim that this um, this uh, dec uh, executive order that was passed last week uh, claimed that this keep families together, um, but also helps Homeland Security flex their zero tolerance policy towards immigration. Um, in national news, as if no news is good news, the Capital Gazette out of Annapolis, Maryland, came under fire when suspect Gerald Ramos had harassed the paper staff over a long-running dispute. Police say came into the offices and began, um, and began firing on staff, killing five um, member five people. The newspaper published this morning with uh, selections belonging to the victims. Uh, be blank to show the impact and loss from their newspaper. The attack came out on what was supposed to have been a normal news day and for many staff members a recovery period after the covering Maryland's primary election on Tuesday before the shooting the big news Thursday was planned event um, introduction day at the US Naval Academy so journalists from around the nation offered to fill those gaps for the Capitol Gazette to honor those lost as they slowly recover but according to a tweet by the Capitol Gazette they said that they're going to be continuing um, running their newspaper normal starting tomorrow. So those are some of the news items that are happening in the city of Missoula, uh, in the city, the state, and in the nation. Here's a couple new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. It's a lot of art stuff, a couple lecture things happening here, but when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the movies that are coming out this weekend, so stay with me. So 
Invest Health is a collaboration between the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, one of our country's largest healthcare funders, and the Reinvestment Fund to transform the way local leaders in small to mid-sized cities work together to create solution-driven and diverse partnerships. Our charge is to develop new strategies to increase and leverage public and private investment to accelerate improvements in neighborhoods facing the biggest barriers to better health. Uh, it's a new initiative, and Missoula is one of 50 cities selected by Robert Wood Johnson. It's a highly competitive process, and we were very honored to uh, be selected to create and leverage these new partnerships to um, improve resident health and well-being in our lowest income neighborhoods. So, as my mother said, who needs another biography of Stalin? <laughs> what is it that you need to know that you don't already know and what isn't already available? Well, first of all, the telling of Stalin's biography, of his life story, is more than simply biography. You know, there's a kind of wonder, first of all, at the achievement. Here's the son of a Georgian cobbler ascending the heights of world power, the architect of an industrial revolution, and the destruction, of course, of millions of people he ruled, the leader of a state that stopped the bloody expansion of fascism. And I just want to talk about one more aspect of what we do with Spark, and that's the why. Because I feel like um, you can know that there are, there are all these hours happening, there are all these residencies happening, there are all these standards being met, but there's a deeper why that makes this initiative and this work really important to me. And that is the things, the things that it does for the students beyond just, um, you know, getting, getting a science standard better, that's great, that's awesome, and I'm so glad it does. Um, remembering the vocabulary words and all of those wonderful things, but I've had students tell me I was really anxious about coming to this class before we did this theater residency, and now I have friends and I look forward to coming to this class. That's why it's important. I've had kids that, um, that wouldn't do work, didn't really find any motivation or anything, and then after the residency, they became straight A students. There could have been a lot of reasons, but that was the turning point for that student. Hey, if you're interested in finding out more information about those programs and more, be sure to log on to our website at MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resources for everything Missoula in terms of media access. So if you are a person out there who likes media and wants to learn a little bit more about and maybe improving some of your skills or maybe learning a new skill whatsoever, MCAT offers training every Wednesday at 5.30 for any up-and-coming videographer. How, however you spin it will help you in any which way whatsoever, as long as it involves media. If you come in here and you'd be like, yeah, you know how to um, um, make a desk? I'll be like, sorry, bro. <laughs> That's just kind of how we are. So anyways, uh, once again, if you want more information about my show, uh, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. You can... Find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can like me, follow me, subscribe, blah, 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 yada, 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 and all that stuff as well. Let's kick it off. Let's kick things, kick, let's just keep kicking. It's time for some pre-critic where I prejudge movies before I have any idea what they're all about. But of course, I've been bombarded with this movie's um, trailer where basically uh, you see Benicio Del Toro like shooting a gun like this, bang, 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 bang. And so anyways, this movie is basically a sequel to a movie that doesn't have the main star from the first one. So they're just kind of like saying, hey, you know what the best part of Sicario was? Benicio Del Toro and Josh Bolin. Let's just get rid of What's-Her-Face and let's stick with these guys and maybe add another female to feel better about it. I don't know. That's just my impression of it. Don't judge me. It is the day of the Salado, and Benicio Del Toro, no relation to Guillermo Del, brings you an action-packed thriller about pain 
a Mexican hitman to do America's dirty work to show that they really are taking our jobs. But then again, this movie follows a man who meets a girl and sees the error of his ways to protect her when the same U.S. government asks him to leave no witnesses and goes against the grain to help this little girl who is like a daughter to him. He might die and she might live because Hollywood is not brave enough to show a gritty truth that kills kids in countries controlled by drug and human traffickers. Moving on. Uh, that got a little heavy handed. Sorry about that. Uncle Drew, hey, you like those movies that go, they're to insert here to play this insert sport here, but then, ha, oh snap, what happens next? This movie, Uncle Drew follows a man who loves sports, but he's not so good at sports, so he doubles down on a bet for a sports competition. So if you're not good at sports and you're betting on sports that your team's going to play really well and you're not good at sports, it doesn't make any sense. So he has to go um, basically find um, a ragtag group of basketball players in the form of senior citizens, I guess. And uh, basically they go through um, NBA and WNBA's greatest stars from the past and make them look like senior citizens, even though that Shaquille O'Neal kind of already, already looks fairly old, even though he's probably one of the younger of the people in this movie. Um, but of course... You couldn't do anything else, right? Um, anyways, watch this movie where you have all the tropes for people who watched only basketball in the 80s and 90s. So, those are some of your movies that are coming out this week. And um, next weekend, there's a whole bunch of other movies coming out, so I'll get some more about that as well. Um, but that pretty much wraps up Pre-Critic. Uh, today, we're doing a live show from 4.30 to 5.30 uh, featuring the kids from our um, stop animation camp that ran from June 25th to June 29th. Uh, we're also doing another camp happening um, July 9th through the 13th. That's our time travelers camp. I believe that there are still spots available for anybody who is interested in taking part of that. And it's a documentary filmmaking camp. Just so you guys know, it's very educational and um, you can make it. We're going to try to make it as fun as possible for sure. But first and foremost, we're going to try to make it a um, it's basically kind of recreate, reenact some historical events that happened out of Fort Missoula. So the kids kind of get to experience that. So we're going to show some fun stuff along that way as well. But as um, as customary, as I always like to do, as I always like to tease our live show that's happening at 4.30 p.m. So I have a video for you guys. It is called Cat and the Pizzeria, part of my summer series where I'm going to be showing a bunch of kid-made videos um, that kids have made over our summer camps over the summer. So without further ado, here is Cat and the Pizzeria. And when I come back, I got some city council, so beware. I'm hungry. Do you want to get some food? I'm not really hungry. I don't want to go alone. Where are you guys going? I was thinking about pizza. Oh, pizza. Make sure you put some anchovies on them. Ew, gross. Why not make a, why not make a three and other heavy crap? Are you sure you don't want to go get food with me? Definitely not. You're just talking to a cat. Meow, wait for me. Can I help you? Got some change. Sorry, I only got five bucks. Give me money! I want money! Ugh, leave me alone, Beardo. Oh, have you been following me? Yes, see, I've been following you ever since you left the house. That's a little weird. Why are you following me? Once you feed a cat, see, He's, you don't feed Tracy. Once you feed a cat, they're yours. Yes. Well, since you're following me, I guess you sh we should hang out for a while. Here. Oh.
Huh. That was a weird 1920s throwback. I don't know what I don't know what those things were. I'm a, I can't read. I'm a cat. Hello. Well, we made it to the pizzeria. Can you make sure my slice has anchovies on it? Oh, cat. <laughs> spicy habanero sauce. No, sir. How about 1% almond milk? No, sir. How about sushi? Sir, this is a pizzeria, not a supermarket. Avocado cheese sticks. No, sir, we do not have that for here. One second. Here, what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have doggy kibble? I'm sorry, sir. You must have this place confused with somewhere else. What kind of pizzeria is this? I'm out! Hello, sir. Welcome to Pizza Mo's. Not to be associated with the obvious. What obvious? You wouldn't understand. Anchovies, anchovies, anchovies. I don't want anchovies. Sorry, sir. I didn't say anything about anchovies. Anchovies are just so gross. They're so salty. Pizza already has enough seasoning. Trust me, once you have anchovies on pizza, your mind will explode of euphoria. If you're not too busy being crazy, sir, please take your order. Meow, 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 meow. Could I talk to your manager? Right away, sir. The customer is always right. Well, well, well. It looks like the tables have turned except with pizza flipping over. Well, looks like I'm the cat who ate the canary. Hey, that's my line. Yeah, that's the cat's line. Wait, you can understand the cat too? I'm a beardo. Let's get out of here. And that's why I don't want to go get food alone. If you thought all that by your own, then you have way more problems than just that. Ah! The end, boo. Close enough. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some things that are happening within the city. Public safety and health kick off our city council meetings, uh, committee meetings that happened on Wednesday, um, June 27th. Um, Jordan Hess talks about how important enforcement and education for the firework ban in the city limits of Missoula um, is. So here is Jordan Hess. The point of this um, informational item is really to um, just shed a little light on what the city's fireworks ordinance is, the importance of it, um, you know, certainly not trying to be a wet blanket on anyone's fun over the 4th, um, but um, just it, urging people to um, take into account um, the, their neighbors. Um, and when it comes to fireworks, with, with the way sounds travel, um, their neighbors could be a good portion of the city. Um, so <clears throat> encouraging people to be respectful and, and aware of um, the concerns related to fireworks this, this, this fireworks season. Um, I know we have um, AC Hoffman here and, um, and Ginny here as well, Ginny Merriam, um, to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to talk about enforcement and, and education, and so um, it's really an open discussion, so I'll, I'll leave my introduction. All right, so that was um, Jordan Hess, kind of giving a brief introduction about the the ban. Of course, the, the ban has been around for the last couple of years. Um, uh, shooting off fireworks in the city are considered illegal, and the city has been running radio and newspaper ads, along with plenty of press releases throughout the media outlets to let people know that there are show that there are shows that are licensed, and you can actually get licensed um, properly through the system to actually fire fireworks within the city, as long as they're kind of like I guess it's just mostly just kind of like 
uh, a lot of times it's like asking for permission in the city limits and whatnot. So that's why, you know, like you have places like the Osprey Field, which fire fireworks if the Osprey win. Um, but you never know uh, to hurt to ask questions of your city. And you can call the city, the Fire Protection Bureau, for more information at 552-6210. And I'll uh, repeat that number a little bit later as well um, after I repeat it right now. 552 62 10 for the Fire Protection Bureau for more information about where is the appropriate places to fire fireworks, um, decibel levels, and also here's Scott Hoffman, Assistant Police Officer, um, Assistant Chief of Police, who talks about how many uh, police officers will be out and about and uh, some, of their uh, some of their things that they'll be doing um, throughout the 4th of July week. Hmm, I guess it, it should be playing pretty soon. Hold on one second. Second, third, and fourth, which this year is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, this year, in addition to uh, the number of officers that we'll have working in the hotline, the calls that we get, which have decreased over the last couple of years to the hotline, um, talk to the Parks and Rec about the Fort Missoula Regional Park. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had officers out there till about midnight, and after midnight is when a large contingency went out there to light fireworks. So in addition to that information, we're having staffing through 2 a.m. out there, and through Parks and Recs, we've talked to them about having their lights on, which will decrease the usage I would believe because it's not so fun to look at them when the lights are on so we're going to try that this year Donna Gockler has been working um, with me to make that happen and we'll see what the effects are on that do you have the numbers handy okay so uh, so I guess so the police department are trying a new approach by basically uh, disincentivizing people to fire fireworks within the city limits by brightening up the um, the peak areas where people would be firing off a lot of those fireworks. Um, there'll be trolls going throughout the city f pretty much all week long, um, just um, just to kind of hand out um, <clears throat> um, tickets. So basically, I think fines occurred can be up to two hundred dollars for uh, fire for uh, fire enough fireworks within the city limits. Um, and also, there's also some um, indication that some even if you're just outside the county line, you also can occur some of those co penalties along the way um, because sound carries. Okay, moving on. So I don't want to get into it because I know this was a huge debated issue and huge stuff like that. So. You guys can watch the whole meeting. That was just a kind of snippet about the meeting as well, but it's at the public safety and health meeting. Let's move on to land use and planning because another hot topic which has been contested throughout the city of Missoula is back in committee and is the demolition permit for historic buildings. So it's an update to, uh, this, to help streamline the process for demolishing buildings while at the same time respecting the old buildings to a point where they can either demolish them, refurbish them, replace them, and Julie, Julie Merritt brings up the first concern about developers being caught between historic preservation and city staff and engineering about moving through the permit process. Because no, nothing hurts worse uh, about trying to get your business built and your um, thing moving forward than um, basically red tape that has to force you to go from one place to another back and forth a bunch of times. So this is some of her concerns that when various arms of the same organization are responsible for issuing different permits and those where one part, arm of the agency may be hoping that something gets done by the other arm of the agency and and they don't then the then the applicant is stuck in the middle with well I can't get this done because I don't have this done and I, um, but I, I understand too that this is a fully new process so maybe those things just aren't really developed yet sure and th the biggest thing about um, when it comes to de development for a lot of these sites that hold the historic buildings is that a lot of times um, there are um, ways to um, work around this. And Emmy Shear clarifies that the uh, offices work side by side to work with demolition permits and to make sure any buildings 
uh, that have uh, a history check before moving forward. So Historic Preservation Committee does an initial review on a lot of these old buildings as well, just to make sure that um, these uh, buildings are um, at the point where they can be refurbished or they might have to be torn down, which takes a little more uh, background work along the way. Heather Hart talks about comments made uh, about the process that is currently um, happening right now. People that um, commented that having to speak to a historic preservation officer would delay the whole process in terms of you know going through and, and making changes to their um, historic house. So to kind of put that well, to relieve people's minds that there's additional oversight and bureaucracy, I do think it's important both for that aspect as well as this one that we're discussing today that we do implement a really easy-to-follow process and keep people apprised of, what, of where you are and the timeline. Yeah, the permitting process, they want to make that easier because the other processes and doing the background checks on some of these buildings and also doing some um, development of these buildings is work in itself because if people want to develop a lot of these sites, the biggest thing they have to prove once and for foremost to demolish these buildings is that they have no clear um, way to refurbish the building or are able to reuse the building so they have to tear down completely. So Heather Hart. Talks. Of, oh wait. So no, no. This whole update is to clarify, but this will also not uh, not decrease the number of hoops to jump through for applicants. But they will help streamline the process that would take X amount of time. Uh, where there is time, there is money involved, and HBC would incur any costs associated with review. And if they can't afford uh, any contracting outside to help them do reviews on some of these historic buildings, um, they will request funds from the city of Missoula. Emmy Shear, uh, who is the historic preservation officer. Um, talks about costs for owners who wish to make money if they cannot redevelop the area that houses historic buildings. So let's say you bought a historic building and you're like, oh, I can't really do anything with this. And now I have a property that's kind of um, I d that I basically have to pay for. So this is what uh, Amy Shearer says to some of the people who have these uh, properties who wish to kind of um, not have these properties. The owner, you know, does have the ability to delist, so they can they can delist their property. It's not an end all game. We're not taking it from them. They have the ability to sell. Um, you know, when, when it comes to historic properties, and as far as the courts go, it's it's not admissible if they want to make more money than they're already making on their property, um, because we do have this sensitive site that we're trying to protect. Uh, so, you know, if they feel that they need to demo it without a redevelopment plan in order to sell it, they'll have to delist the property. All right, so that's kind of like, oh, I hope that helps clarify, but if you want more information, you could learn more by going on to the committee meetings, land use and planning. They've been talking about this for quite a while now. Um, it's on the, um, the consent agenda for public hearing, so if you uh, have anything you want to say about it, they will put it on July 23rd, and if they have any announcements of any upcoming um, meetings for the land use and planning, they'll put it on the agenda, so you can check that out on the website, which I'll show you later. Uh, Parks and Conservation, um, what uh, the land use and planning is talking about the past. We're going to be talking about the future with the Fort Missoula Regional Park, which is moving towards an official opening, grand opening for the phase two, uh, which is July 26th. So basically everything at Fort Missoula will be open, but the dog park, the dog park is supposed to be really nice too. Uh, you know, you don't have to put a dog on a leash and there's a nice little pond for uh, dogs to swim and stuff like that, but it's not open. I don't know why I'm advertising the dog pond when it's not even going to be open. So it's going to happen on Thursday. July 26th. Um, it's going to happen from 6 to 10 p.m. The ribbon cutting starts at 6, and then they're basically going to be open, and they're going to be doing all sorts of activities. So this phase two is all about the softball fields and some of the uh, additional playgrounds. They're also going to have a grand playground that's also going to be there, which is not open currently. The Dar um, Neil Miner, who is with Parks and Rec, gave a presentation on phase two and how things are going. And uh, weather tends to be their biggest challenges, so they had to delay an opening um, for the 26th. Uh, our largest challenge, I think, as far as I'm concerned, has been the weather. Um, I had a slide originally that uh, other I've presented before detailing the records set up until grand opening last year. 
Um, if you guys knew two La Nina winters that were really hard, we you know flashed out last year. All the smoke, all the challenges we've had this extremely wet spring, um, cold the longest period. I think there was a record set between days below 60, um, 60 degrees, which if a lot of you probably don't know, but that's turf and grass doesn't like to grow. It doesn't really come out of dormancy until you kind of get above 60 degrees, so that's really challenging in building a park. So most of the park structure right now is built all ready to go. Um, they're just waiting on the grass to grow, and weather permitted, uh, they're waiting for the grass to help grow, and it takes some time because they have a large area that they wish to um, uh, they put seeds down for the grass. So, um, last uh, just last week they hosted a softball tournament. So the softball fields are open for tournament play. They are going to be doing one this weekend as well. But it's not uh, one of those kind of things where they're open for just the general public. You can't just ask to be rented. But it looks like for any tournaments and anything that's happening around the city of Missoula, the Parks and Rec are offering um, tournament play at the. Um, the five softball field area in the Fort Missoula Regional Park. Most of the area still isn't officially open, but some playgrounds are accessible, and the large playground off of Phase 2 area will be opened part of their grand opening on July 26th. Donna Glockler, with Parks and Rec, uh, uh, who is the Parks and Rec creation director talks about services Fort Missoula Regional Park is providing. Um, there's um, going to be a couple back and forth happening there with Neil Miner and a couple staff members, but here is Donna Glockler. We think we're there. Uh, we have a big softball tournament coming up this weekend, and P5 uh, is not yet fully open because we still have construction going on, and so the softball group is working with um, the high school and the hospital for extra parking. Our biggest challenge is getting athletes to walk. Um, and then for people, um, individuals who ha may have mobility concerns, we do have an electric cart that we do use, and we can transport multiple folks. Uh, we had a really cool event uh, with the tribal elders in the open space area because we have a, a joint bitterroot project going on. And we used the cart to get them all to the site because uh, several were, were elderly, and it would have been about a quarter-mile walk on gravel. And, and so we, we do everything we can to get people to park where they need to and then transport them if they need assistance. And just to clarify, the, the project has about 1,300 parking spaces. I have to count our final count. But I think it, the biggest challenge has been programming events uh, with the different user groups and just kind of offsetting those start times. And it's kind of like you know not having picture day for all the events on the same day where you have four cars per player show up. I think those have been the biggest, some of the biggest challenges Don has mentioned. Yeah. I think so. outside of the rain, and Neil hits it right on the head, is our program staff has been extremely amenable to whatever our customer base wants. And I think that very customer service has caused some of our parking issues, and so we're going to have to be a little bit more restrictive about what we allow when in order to allow the parking to work because we we felt that we had appropriately parked and when development services reviewed it they were questioning if we had over planned parking and so we, we feel like we're on except for the the great big massive events on both sides at the same time and a event at the museum then we know we'll need extra parking all right so the biggest thing is parking, and, you know, Missoula is not shy of, of not having enough parking. Thir 1,300 parking spots in the new Fort Missoula Region Park is pretty reasonable um, when it comes to uh, sharing it between uh, the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula and also the new park that's being there as well. Um, you can watch the Parks and Conservation along with any of these other committee meetings by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Your source for everything City of Missoula. Everything that's happening, all your city government meetings, and more. Um, but time to throw it to some cool little art clips. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about events. So here is the last art clip from the Clay Studio of Missoula. We'll be wrapping up this today. Well, today is the last day for the Clay Studio of Missoula. So uh, here's a little uh, sneak peek of what you guys, uh, what you can see there. But if you want to see the full show, go there yourself. <laughs>
Hey, what's happening? Let me tell you what's happening here in the city of Missoula with Missoula Events Time. Let's kick things off with the first thing, all your indoor sports arena type fun at Mismo, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acro Sports Center. All day camps, all sorts of wonderful things happening from 9 a.m., 8.30 until the, well into the afternoon. They have a couple half day camps and full day camps at some of these places as well. You'll have to call them to find out when and where. Um, family fun time and Tiny Tales is kicking off every Friday at 10.30 a.m. It's a good way to get kids exposed to books. Um, Hands-on science, Ozbots, and batteries. Spectrum Discovery Area is hosting, f uh, is open for all visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Um, they're at 812 Tool Avenue. It's 350 for anyone four and over, and if you're under three, you get in free. Discovery Bench, um, they're talking about uh, Ozobots and batteries, uh, cardboard creations in the maker space. Um, they will feature uh, scientists each day and will showcase activities related to their field. And the science of the uh, scientist of the day is Steve Wozniak. Hmm, cool. Um, but I don't think they're actually going to be there. <laughs> So anyways, uh, free lunch at Missoula Public Library for anybody who is 18 and under. So if you want a free lunch at Missoula Public Library, it starts at 1130 and it goes Monday through Friday all summer long. Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula uh, Senior Center. If you want to challenge some people to some cribbage or some bridge, starting at 1230-ish is the great place to do it at Missoula Senior Center, which has the best dance floor in Missoula. Montana Native Plant Society 2018 Annual Meeting. Hey, you guys like talking about plants? Well, go on down to the Cane Ridge West Conference and Retreat Center. That's a mouthful. Uh, explore the theme wildfires and wild, wait, wildfires? Mm. So the wildfires to wildflowers is their theme with uh, the Montana Native Plant Society and their 2018 Annual Meeting. Um, this year's meeting is at uh, Cane Ridge, it's near Lincoln. Um, it's on the weekend of June 29th through the July 1st. So it starts today at 2 p.m. and it goes on all weekend long. And it's a good way just to learn about plants. And it's 32 years of post-fire plant succession. So they kind of map out the area based on uh, places affected by fires in the last 32 years. Treasure Island, hey, you like Missoula Children's Theater? Um, well, they have camps all summer long and they're doing uh, performances at 4 p.m. at 6 p.m. So one of your kids might be at the 4 p.m. show or the 6 p.m. show. They usually kind of do that, kind of switch around for a lot of the kids to do different parts at the Children's Theater. So the year is 1782. Uh, the American War for Revolution is on its last days. Long and for adventure, Jim comes under the hypnotic spell of the legendary py pirate Long John Silver while waiting tables in his family's inn. Jim finds a treasure map, and with the villainous Silver, as he's has as seen his... Well, that's weird phrasing um he sails uncharted seas with him and um with the mi mysterious treasure island so you get to check that out and also around at 6 p.m they have the opening celebration for fort missoula softball complex this is more of their soft opening happening um, on fr on friday um this is the first pitch ceremony at the fort missoula softball complex uh picnic at 6 p.m ribbon cutting at 6 45 exhibition softball game will feature different softball leagues in missoula men's slow pitch men's fast pitch women's um co-rec Junior Olympics, 45 senior men's, um, so it's 45 plus um, for senior men's uh, baseball, softball, and a home run derby starting at 9 p.m. And then Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturday, um, uh, they're going to have 70 teams softball tournament happening all weekend long, and it's open to the public, and it's free admission. And that pretty much concludes your uh, Friday events. Uh, here are some of your late night events that are happening tonight on Friday. Buckethead is going to be playing at the Wilma and they are rock music. Violet, Little Fish, Cashew Monday, and the Pool Boys will be at Monk's Bar. Um, it's going to be rock music. The sh <laughs> The Shiver is going to be at Union Club. Uh, 90s Party, Zima, Jolly Ranchers is going to be at VFW. Um, so basically, they're trying to um, do a 90s night. So if you like the 90s and like 90s music, why not? You know, hoop a stink. Um, Letter B is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge at Rock and Folk. Uh, some Rock and Folk music at Top Hat Lounge. I remember Letter B when they started a couple years ago. They're really good now, assuming that they were pretty bad before. <laughs> Anyways, here is... Um, <laughs> that was so mean. But anyways, uh, you can enjoy those events and more. MissoulaEvents.net. Here is another art clip for you guys. And this is ending um, next Friday. So uh, this is from Zootown Arts Community Center.
Hey guys, welcome back. Plenty of art and plenty of things to do this weekend as well. Let's kick things off with your Saturday. It's the Farmer's Market. Uh, it's going on all summer long. It happens from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m.-ish, depending upon um, your uh, which of the three places you want to stop by, whether on Pine Street, up by the Red X's, or underneath the Higgins Bridge. All fun um, Farmer's Market, People's Market, meats, um, foods, and all sorts of knickknacks and stuff that you can buy, um, all happening all summer long. It's fun to check out. It's an experience. Introduction to whitewater kayaking. So Black Fort Clark Fork River is doing a $200 uh, all days happening Saturday and Sunday. Um, and this is a two-day introduction into kayak class. Uh, it's going to be um, basically taught at the Frenchtown Pond and, or, um, or Sandy Beaches, where they will start with an equipment overview and underwater comfort. They'll introduce the class to basic whitewater kayaking skills, such as the wet exit, stern draw, reverse forward steep, uh, sweep, sorry, rudder, forward stroke, hip snaps, and T rescues. So um, it's a nice, you know, it's a nice pretty uh, um, placid pond that they have in um, Frenchtown, and it's a good way just to kind of pick up kayaking with some of the uh, high rivers that are happening in the uh, Montana area. So hands-on science, properties of water, Spectrum Discovery Center, they host a bunch of activities happening there and they're doing uh, properties of water as their um, exhibit this Saturday. Praying Mantis game, Missoula Secretarium, on this day they will be uh, taking all about praying mantises and why we may see them around Missoula. These little insects are not native to Montana, but they are considered beneficial, so we don't mind having them around. Join us as we learn about all about praying mantises and their benefits right in our backyards while we play f a fun interactive game. And that's going to be at the Inse Missoula Insectarium. You can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. If you're interested in finding out what's happening for your Saturday, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. There's a bunch of thi little things happening along those days as well. There's the Bob Marshall Music Festival that uh, kind of kicked off on Thursday and it's going on throughout this weekend. It's up in Sealy Lake. And it's going to be a bunch of bluegrass music, a bunch of just, it's like a whole festival in their uh, area town. Um, there's not really much happening in the afternoon. There's a, uh, there's Roxy Jr. Uh, the Roxy Theater hosts a movie for kids, and it's called Enchanted. Um, Wolf and the Moons is going to be a Great, br br uh, great Burn Brewing Company. Rod Morrison is going to be a Imagination Brewing Company. John Floridus. Um, I've had him on the show a couple times, and he's going to be playing at DraftWorks Brewing Company. He's usually a one-man band. He knows how to use those loopers on his uh, guitars and stuff, so he really knows how to make some sweet music with that. And he's been voted uh, Best Musician for, by The Independent. Um, not this year. I think the last couple of years he's done it before. But um, And also Jordan Smith is going to be at uh, Ten Spoon Winery. It's going to be some folk music, but there's going to be a whole bunch of things as well. But there's going to be a ride back in time tonight, I mean tomorrow night, is going to be at the Frenchtown State Park. So if you're interested in learning about uh, Frenchtown and some of that stuff, uh, experience living history with um, Perry uh, Nyes during a ride back in time to the Rocky Mountain Rendezvous era at Frenchtown Pond State Park, West's Shelter on Saturday, June 30th at 7 p.m. It's free and open to the public of all ages. Um, it's all about um, the history between 1825 to 1840, when trapping was the main economic, um, um, man, uh, export of Montana. Yep. Yeah, so it was, it was basically, it was crucial. It was a big part of Montana with, uh, frontier times and uh, taming the West. So that was kind of like the big thing. And they'll be talking a little bit more about this with images and videos as she talks about this along the way. So you can learn a, bit, a little bit about that. Uh, over in Frenchtown. Um, there's a bunch of other things happening tonight as well. They're going to be doing uh, a rockability in the Union Ballroom. So uh, it's going to be rockability. Um, I believe that's part of their, it uh, might be part of the summer camps that are happening with uh, Zach as well. Um, absolutely with Chris Moon, who's going to be at the Badlanders. So there's some DJ music. And the Josh Farmer Band. I uh, know Josh Farmer, great band. And they're going to be playing at the Union Club. He's been playing around the city of Missoula for the last like eight years. So he's, he's pretty solid. Nice piano player. Um, but that pretty much is it for your Saturday. I do want to talk about a couple events that are happening on Sunday. The Fourth Way presentation. Uh, fourth Way is an um is a basically um, it's a nonfiction book, um, and they're going to be talking and they're going to have uh, somebody talking about. Mm, let me try to get through. Let's see. So it's on with George uh, 
Gurdjieff in the early 1900s in the presentation will discuss the origins, history, practices, and aims. They also discuss the influence of the fourth way has had on our modern society through literature, theater, movies, and science. The presentation will culminate with the introduction to some fourth way techniques of mindfulness and will be followed by time for questions and answers. I believe the fourth way is when they started to adjust their uh, way of writing in um, some of their books along the way, like the Mark Twain kind of transition into the 1900s along the way. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, there's not much going on this weekend as well. Saturday, it seems like there's a big gap uh, in your afternoon. But if you guys want to do go to a softball tournament, Missoula Parks and Recreation, um, Missoula, Fort Missoula Regional Park is going to be hosting 70 different softball teams this weekend as well. So I, I know for a fact that one of my coworkers will be slammed at a couple of their restaurants as well. Anyways, um, I think that pretty much does it for Wake Up Missoula. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Once again, I want to remind you that if you are interested in finding out more about your uh, city and what's happening in the city of Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. You can also go to uh, uh, ci.missoula.mt.us. It talks about some of the upcoming things and um, government um, city meetings that are happening in the city as well. But of course, you can always go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to read you write it out twice. If you are interested in finding out about MCAT in our summer camps this summer, all of July will be filled with our summer camp. So our hours here at MCAT will be from um, 5 to 8 p.m. And they're by appointment only. So you'll have to call us at 542-6228 for uh, more information about the scheduling. But we'll be open for our regular hours during the week of July 4th will be closed on July 4th and I'll be back for your July 4th show next Wednesday. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm.